Are you suffering from a herniated disc and you're looking for some exercises to help it get better? If you are, then this video is going to show you my three favorite herniated disc exercises. Hi everybody, my name is Will Harlow and I'm the over 50s and sciatica specialist physiotherapist here at HT Physio in Farnham. And today we're going to be talking about my three favorite herniated disc exercises. Now, before we dive into the content of the video, if you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel using the link in the bottom right, because then you'll be the first to hear about our new sciatica and herniated disc videos when they come out. Now that that's been said, let's talk about a herniated disc. And what we're talking about in this video is a herniated disc of the lower back or the lumbar spine. So the discs in our spine are these things here that live in between the vertebra in the spine. So the vertebra are the bones and the discs are these kind of tough shells of collagen with a fluid center inside. And in normal times, they're quite flexible, so they help us to move and to bend. But for many people, they can develop weaknesses in the outer layers of the disc, which causes sometimes what we call a disc herniation. And that's when the fluid center of the disc pushes out towards the back of the disc, okay, via those weakened points. And if the material inside the disc actually leaves the disc, it can cause a lot of pain because it can press on a nerve root, cause inflammation in the spine and irritation to the area. And herniated discs can cause symptoms like sciatica, which is pain in the leg, back pain, it can cause pins and needles, it can cause numbness, it can sometimes cause weakness in the legs as well. So a herniated disc is a very uncomfortable condition. It's typically one of the most painful conditions we treat in the clinic here. And in terms of my caseload here in the clinic, herniated disc patients probably make up about 30% of the people we see. So There's a very significant problem. For many people with a herniated disc, they can suffer for quite a long time. Typically people have it for several months before they come and seek help from someone like me. And quite a lot of the time when I see people, they're doing exercises that are making it worse or at the very best, not helping it to get better. Now with a herniated disc, the important thing to note is that the best exercises are going to be different for everyone. That's why people like me exist because we can assess each person as an individual and then prescribe the right exercises. So what I'm not going to say with this video here is that these exercises are guaranteed to work because they're not, okay? They might not help you. Some of these exercises might actually make your herniated disc feel worse. But what I am going to reveal to you today is the three exercises that most commonly help people with herniated discs. Obviously, it makes sense for you to try these exercises only after you've spoken to a practitioner who can assess you and check whether they're right for you because these exercises certainly aren't gonna help everyone. Now, that being said, each one of these three exercises works in a slightly different way to help people with herniated discs. And I'm gonna explain each one as we go. They're all very simple to do. And the key thing with these exercises is that they should feel comfortable. They shouldn't aggravate the sciatica. They shouldn't aggravate any pins and needles or numbness while you're doing them. And after you finish doing them, the sciatica shouldn't feel worse in the 24 hour period afterwards. OK, if any of those things are not met, if any of those conditions are not ticked off, then it's probable that these exercises are not the right ones for you. So that being said, make sure you're checked out by a practitioner before you try these. Let's have a look at these exercises. You can have a go at them at home if it's appropriate for you to do so. And hopefully it will give you some relief from your herniated disc pain. So the first herniated disc exercise that I often give to people with this problem is called the Cobra. Now, the Cobra is a common exercise that many people have seen in yoga and Pilates, but the way we do it for a herniated disc is probably a bit different to the way you've seen it before. Now, the Cobra works pretty much because what it does is it brings blood flow back to the injured disc and helps it to heal a bit quicker. Now, the discs in the spine have a very poor blood supply. They don't have any direct blood vessels going into them. So for them to heal, what has to happen is the blood 
that does the healing has to diffuse in through the vertebra, get into the disc, do its job, and then diffuse back out. So as you can imagine, that takes a very long time. So my theory is that if you can improve the blood flow to the disc, you can speed up healing. Now, what I'm going to say is the caveat to this exercise is I would only ever prescribe it to someone whose pain is worse when they bend forward. So the sciatica comes when they bend and better when they're upright and walking around. OK, so that is the category I look for if I'm going to give this to a person to try. So I'll show you the exercise now. And then if it's appropriate for you to do so, obviously, you can have a go at home if you've had it cleared by your doctor. So to do this exercise, you need to lie on your front. You can do this on the floor, preferably a nice firm surface. So I recommend people put a yoga mat down on the floor or do this on a nice carpeted area of their house. And what you're going to do is you're going to lie face down with your hands underneath your shoulders. Now, the exercise is very, very simple. All you're going to do is you're going to push through your hands and lift your torso up towards the ceiling. Now, if I do this exercise, I can get my arms fully straight, but that isn't necessary to make it work. So I'm just showing you the full range of motion. So you can make this exercise work just by going halfway. So if that feels comfortable, you come back down. So we're only going as high as feels comfortable. So we're going up, stopping when we reach resistance and then straight back down and the way this often differs from yoga and pilates is that in many yoga and pilates um, classes the teacher will get you to hold now from my experience holding can often trigger the sciatica in people so what i ask people to do is just to keep the set moving so you're going all the way up you can see how my pelvis is still on the floor so we're just lifting the torso not the leg so it's not a press up and then we're going up as high as we feel comfortable, stopping and then coming straight back down. And you can notice how I'm keeping my back moving throughout the whole set. Now, when you're doing this at home, you can allow yourself to come right back to the ground between repetitions, okay? Because that obviously gives you a little bit of a rest. And what I recommend to people when they're doing this exercise is they do 10 in a row Okay, even if it feels like you could do 20, just stop at 10 and then keep coming back to this throughout the course of the day. That tends to be one of the best ways to get some relief from herniated disc leg pain. The regularity is where the magic happens. So it's not about how many you do in one go. It's about how often it's done. So 10 in a row works pretty well. What we usually would also recommend to people is that we don't typically give this exercise to people who are over the age of about 65. And the reason we don't do that is because the spine starts to wear down in the facet joints when you get past that age. So this exercise will eventually become unsuitable for many people as they get older. So that's another thing to bear in mind. But the Cobra is one of the most popular exercises I give for herniated discs. It improves blood flow to the disc and I think it speeds up healing. So that is why is my number one exercise. Now my second favorite exercise to prescribe for a herniated disc is something I call nerve flossing. Now nerve flossing is a very interesting type of exercise. What it does is it works off the premise that your nervous system is connected all the way from your brain down your spinal cord and then into your sciatic nerve. Okay so we've got your brain then we've got the big nerve called the spinal cord, and then we've got the sciatic nerve going into the legs, and that is how the back part of your body functions. Now, when we have a herniated disc, obviously what can happen is the herniated disc can trap the sciatic nerve or one of the branches of it as it exits the spine. So what we end up with is a sciatic nerve that's being caught every time you move your leg or your back. Now, what this exercise does, this nerve flossing exercise, it's designed to help the caught sciatic nerve glide a little bit more freely inside those tight spaces so it's not getting trapped by the disc as much. So it's a bit of a funny looking exercise. I'm going to demonstrate it now. The reason we would give this to people is if they had sciatica or if they had some numbness and some pins and needles, sometimes this can free it up. 
But a big indicator to not do this exercise is if when you do it, it makes the symptoms worse. Okay, so make sure you don't do this if it aggravates your symptoms. Now to make this exercise work, the best way to start is on sitting on a surface where your feet are just off the floor. So that could be a high chair, could be a stool, you could be sitting on a, a high bed or even a table if it's safe to do so. Now what you're going to do is you're going to sit in a position where your legs are hanging down, you're going to put one hand in front of your tummy and one hand behind your back just to support you. And then all you're going to do is alternate between two positions. So we're going to pretend it's my right leg which is the one with the sciatica. So the first position is I'm going to put my leg up and as I do so I'm also going to lift my head and my shoulders. And then the second position is we're going to put your leg down and head down. So we go again, leg up, head up, and you can see if I do this exercise fully, I'm using my shoulders as well, rounding my back, leg down, head down, leg up, head up. And what I'm doing as I move like this is I'm effectively moving my nervous system up and down within my body. And that sounds like a very strange concept, but if you think about what my nerves are doing right now, they're sliding up and then they're sliding down as I move my head, which has my brain and my spinal cord. And then as I move my leg, which has my sciatic nerve, the whole nervous system is having to move. So you can see here, I'm not holding it like a stretch. I'm keeping the movement going. I'll show you on the left as well. So you can see how it looks on this side. So it'd be leg down, head down, leg up, head up leg down, head down, leg up, head up. And this feels quite nice. What we should feel is no stretching happening because as, as we're putting the tension on here, we're taking the tension off here, okay? And as we put the tension on here, we're taking the tension off here. So we're taking the tension on one end and taking it off on the other end as we move. So that's the nerve flossing exercise. What I tend to do with that one is recommend people do 10 repetitions on their leg and then they just keep coming back to that again over the course of the day, probably three or four times for most people. Now, as with the other exercises, if this hurts or if this is not suitable for you, judging by advice from your medical practitioner, then do not attempt it. But for people who've had it cleared, it can work as quite a nice exercise for pain relief from a herniated disc. So the final exercise I'm going to show you in this series, I call the side glide. Now this is another great exercise for herniated disc pain relief, and it works from a similar premise as the first exercise we did, which was the Cobra. Now this exercise is actually very common in a, an approach called McKenzie, and that is a, uh, an approach that was started by uh, a physiotherapist called Robin McKenzie. And he came up this, with this, idea that if you do repetitive movements of your back, you can theoretically help a herniated disc to re-centralize and get rid of some of the pain along the way. I won't explain the mechanism. I can do another video explaining that in more detail. But what I will say is this exercise is only really suitable for people with sciatica in one leg. And it doesn't work for everyone, but what it does do is it helps to restore some spinal mobility and it can often reduce the level of pain that's going down the person's leg. Okay, so what we need to do is find a wall that we can lean on for this exercise. And it's very important that we only do this exercise in one direction, and that direction is determined by which leg you have the pain in. So you're going to stand next to a wall, and the, the wall you stand next to, or the side you have the wall next to, should be the opposite side to where your pain is. So if I'm demonstrating here now, the pain is here on my left leg and I've got a wall on my right side. Okay, it's very important that we get this direction correct. Now what you want to do is you want to stand with your feet probably about two feet away from the wall and you're going to take your opposite arm, so this is the arm of the good side, and you're just going to prop it up using your forearm on the wall there. So you're leaning 
towards the wall. So you should be in a straight line, kind of leaning diagonally with your arm propped up. The exercise looks like this. So you take your opposite hand and you just put it on your hip. So this is the side with the bad hand. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to glide my hips towards the wall. So I'm keeping my arms still, I'm keeping my feet where they are, and I'm trying to move my hips towards the wall, okay? So we're gliding the hips towards the wall. And don't worry if you don't touch the wall. You can see here, I can't quite touch the wall. My spine won't bend that far. And we're not trying to strain. It should be nice and easy. It's a mobilization, we call this, not a strengthening movement or a stretch. And what we're doing is by going this way, we're putting pressure on the left side okay, of the disc, if we're going right. And what that's doing is it's closing down the space where the disc herniation is. And theoretically, what it should be doing is moving that herniated disc material back to the center of the spine. Now, whether or not that is actually what happens, we don't know. That's the sort of commonly accepted theory. But what we do know is that for many people, this does actually bring about pain relief. So if it works, then it works as far as I'm concerned. I'll show you the other way. So let's pretend I've got pain in my right leg. So I would stand this way with my feet two feet away from the wall. I'd have my forearm propped up against the wall and I'd have my right hand on my hip. And then I'm going to move my left hip towards the wall and then come back to center towards the wall come back to center and again there's no need to hold it we can just glide towards the wall and then come back glide towards the wall and come back and again the way this exercise works is similar to the others you would do 10 in a row only on the side that's appropriate for you so it's a one-sided exercise and you come back to this again a few times a day with all of these exercises, the magic seems to be in the regularity rather than how many you do in one go. Okay, that seems to be the best way for herniated discs. So those are my three exercises. I hope they make sense. We've got the Cobra, we've got the nerve flossing, and then we've got the wall side glides. So those are three of my best exercises for herniated disc relief. As I said, these exercises are not suitable for everyone, so make sure you're checked out by a practitioner before you try them. That being said, I give these to a lot of people with herniated discs, and they can have a really positive effect. Now, even if you're doing the right exercises, it's true that it's going to take time for a herniated disc to get better. Typically, it takes about three months of rehab for a herniated disc to get better, and that doesn't include the time when you first suffer the injury and you're not doing anything to help it. For most people, they're better within 3 to 12 months of a herniated disc. If you're not noticing any improvements after a couple of months, it's well worth being seen by a professional who can help you out. But hopefully these exercises will help to improve the blood flow to the disc, improve the mobility of the nerve itself, and get the spine feeling a bit better. So those are the exercises. I hope that's all made sense. If that's been a useful video, please do leave me a comment below because I love to read them. And if you want more from me, you can pick up a copy of my book. It's called Thriving Beyond 50 and you can find it on Amazon using the link below this video. It's got loads more content about sciatica. And I've also left a link below this video to our dedicated sciatica website, which has loads of information, articles, videos, things like this which, that can help people with herniated discs and other forms of sciatica too. You can find that using the links below. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you on the next video.